Before we do the thorough tracing of your test entry to GUnit method, I would like to review very quickly about the idea of reference aliasing. And I would like to also talk about the more general concept of value copying. Okay, that's really the uh, concept to understand in order to understand aliasing. So the topic would be value copying. And there are two kinds of value you can actually copy in Java. One is primitive value, the other one is reference value. They will be copied in the same way. It's just that in the case of reference value, you're basically copying just the addresses of objects rather than the objects themselves. Okay? Let's talk about the case of primitive value. So case number one would be for primitive variable. Primitive variables. Okay, that one is rather simple, but I think uh, just in order to show you that it's uh, copying has been done in a very consistent way. So I better show that as well. Uh, the simplest example I can think of would be if I say integer i is assigned to 23. And then if I say integer j is assigned to i. So here for the two lines of code, we got one instance of value copying of the primitive value, which is this line over here. Let's visualize exactly uh, how that's occurring. For the first line, we declare uh, a variable, a primitive uh, type variable, which can be visualized as a box. And then we say i stores the value 23. And then for the second line over here, we also declare another variable j, which is just another box. And the way we initialize j is by copying the value of i into j, right? And in that case, we'll get also 23, okay? So let me just say that uh, over here. So this variable assignment here tells you that you we are going to copy whatever value that is stored in i to j. That's basically what we're doing. It's very simple, but this mechanism will be used in also in the context of uh, copying the value of reference variable, which we'll see right away. Okay, let's now talk about case number two. Okay, so case number two will be for reference variables. So reference variables meaning that the type of the variable is going to correspond to some existing class, either from the Java API library or maybe from our projects. In this case, let's choose products, which is the, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the class in our Apple Shop projects. Okay, for case number two. And we'll simply just use a default constructor from the product class just for simplicity, okay? Let's now see this. For line number one, I'm going to say products over here let's say p1 is assigned to new products okay like that i'm using the default constructor so let me just make a uh, some space for me so i will have enough space for the rest of the lines okay and let's have a second line if i have products over here let's say p2 let's say it's actually new products. And the principle we learned before, since we're using two separate keywords, so these two project, uh, so these two product objects should not have the same address. They should have distinct addresses. And the final line I would like to do is to say P2 is assigned to P1. That's the final line. And in this, uh, in these uh, three lines of program, we also got one instance of the reference value copying, which is this line over here. Let's see exactly how. For line number one over here, we are basically creating a new product object and then store its address into P1, right? That's the uh, uh, the tracing that we spoke about thoroughly in, the, uh, in part one. So I'm not gonna repeat that. So what we're gonna have is, we are simply going to have, let me change the color. So that'll be pink, let's say here. So this will be a products uh, objects, right? Let's assume all the uh, attributes will be a default value. I'm not gonna write it, okay? 
So what's going to happen is P1 is going to store the address of this particular product. So P1 diagrammatically is going to point to this object over here. That's for P1. And then for P2 over here is actually going to, let me use maybe orange. P2 is going to store the address of this new object, which will be a separate object allocated in a distinct uh, location of the memory, right? So what I would do, you can think about, we're we simply just going to have another object. Let me put it here, okay? And then uh, that one better be orange, just to be consistent with the color. So let's say uh, here, orange, right? And that one there, we got P2 pointing to this new object over here. Hopefully so far so good. And how do we understand this line over here? P2 is assigned to P1. We're going to follow the same principle here. When we did earlier, when we say J is assigned to I, we basically copy the ad uh, we copy the value that is stored in I into J. Now we are doing the same thing. We're going to copy the value that is stored in P1 into P2. Okay, let me write it down first. What this will do is copy the address value. Copy the address store in P1 to P2. What's going to be the consequence of that? P1 currently store the address of this project here. P2 currently store the address of this project over here. If I want to copy the address that is stored in P1, which refers to this project, and I'm going to copy this value here into P2. And diagrammatically, it's going to make, make sure P2 will point to this object instead. Agree? Let me make it even more concrete for you. Hypothetically, let's say this. Let's say this object, uh, this product over here, simply, uh, the orange one, simply got uh, some address. I'll make it up. Let's say just, uh, let's say uh, 0x2345. Okay. On the other hand, we got this pink object over here. Let me 0x4972. Just uh, distinct addresses. So what we have uh, before the, uh, uh, after these two lines, after that, we got P2 over here storing the address 0x2345. So it's really stored the address of this uh, object over here. And then let's say for over here, we got also P1 and P1 also stored the objects of, the address of a diff different objects. So that'd be 0x4972. That's all we have, right? Okay. So now let's follow this principle over here. Copy address stored in P1 into P2. Copy the address that's stored in P1, which is the, which is this address over here. Copy that over into P2. So that means this, rather than this value over here, we're going to copy that over. That'll be 0x4972, which indeed refers to this object over here, right? So that's just another way to see it. But you don't want to see it this way. I, want, I want to explain to you just once, just so that you can understand exactly how to understand this. Let me recap. In the case of reference variable, whenever you see the variable assignment for the reference variable, you're basically saying copy whatever address that is stored in this P1 into P2. Diagrammatically, P2 is now going to point to wherever P1 is pointing to. So what, what we have is like this. So P2, rather than pointing to this object over here, is now going to point to this object here as well. So now we got aliasing. So this is called aliasing. So let me write down the definition of aliasing. So aliasing, reference aliasing sometimes. Aliasing means address of an objects is actually stored in multiple variables. In this case, the address of this product object is stored in uh, multiple variables. Multiple means more than one. It's stored in P1, also it's stored in P2 because of this variable assignment over here, right? All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So that's about the uh, re uh, very quick review about reference aliasing.